Hello everyone. So as you know, there are a lot of finished objects in Revit called families that are ready for use, such as walls, windows, doors. But what happens if you can't find the object that you need within the given Revit families? Well, you have two options. The first one is you can search for it in an online database, such as uh, revitcity.com or bimobject.com and download it from there. Or the second option, which is a bit more exciting, you can build your own family and shape it in the way that it fits all your needs. And today I'm going to show you how. We're going to create a door today and we're going to make it fully parametric. That means you can change its dimensions uh, or its materials when you use it in the project. But that's not the only thing. We're also going to make a door that you can open because I noticed that none of the doors in Revit are openable and sometimes for a rendering maybe you would like the door to be open or like half open so you can see the room behind that. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first step to making your own parametric family is you need to think of what kind of uh, geometrics and what kind of information you want to put into it. So I recommend making a little sketch even if it's a bit old school. Um, but this is the sketch that I made for our door today. So those are the parameters that we wanted to have. We want to be able to change the width and the height and then uh, the frame thickness. And we want it to be of this kind of construction type. I think it's called rebated door in English, but it's this kind of construction type where the door sits on top of the frame so that you can uh, that you can open it 180 degrees. And then we also want a parameter to change the frame material and the door material. And we're going to need a visibility parameter to make the door openable. But I'm going to explain you all about that later on in the video. So with all of that in mind, we can now go to Revit and create a new family. We search for the door template, which is this one and click on open. And what we see now is a template that we can create our door in, so we don't have to start from scratch. So it already has a generic piece of wall with an opening, and it has these construction planes that are very helpful because we can attach our objects to them. So we can see there's all already two construction planes that define the width. And if we go to an elevation, we can see that the height is also already defined with a construction plane. So this means if I go to the family types now and change the value for the height, for example, to 4000, the construction plane and thus the attached door frame is going to change with it. So the first thing we're going to do is delete the existing frame because it's because we want a different construction type. And what we need now to make our new frame is an extrusion. So we can go back to this view and create an extrusion. We select the rectangle and draw a rectangle on top of these reference planes. And then we select those little lockets and close them. So our rectangle will be fixed to the reference planes. Uh, we need another rectangle to make the thickness of the frame and click escape to go back to modifying mode and then we delete this line and then drag this right here on join elements and create another one to close those two. So now we have the shape of our frame <laughs> roughly but we also wanted to make the thickness uh, parametric. So we create a dimension. Um, if you don't have the dimension tool up here, you can find it under annotate. And then we select all, all three sides of our frame and click escape. And now when we select one of the dimensions, we can here in this label box assign a parameter to it but as we don't have one yet we need to create it so we click on this little icon right here 
and then name it frame thickness. Oops. We want to make it a type parameter and click OK. So now I can assign those two uh, dimensions to the same parameter of the frame thickness and you see that it now changes accordingly. But I think it's a bit too thick with 125 uh, millimeters, so we're going to change it to 80. Okay. So then we can finish off this extrusion. And what we need to do now is fix the frame to the wall thickness. So we go back to the reference level and what we see now that this is the frame that we just created, the extrusion. Uh, which goes in the opposite direction of what we wanted to. So we can grab this little triangle and drag it to the outer edge of the wall. And then we see this locket appears again. So we click it so it gets fixed to this reference plane exterior. Uh, check the other side as well. If we drag it back and then back onto the line, we can fix the locket. And now if we change the wall type, to a thicker wall, we see that our extrusion changes with it. So that's perfectly. It's always good to check that right away so you know, you see whether it works or not. So, but if you remember my drawing from before, you know that our door needs to have a little cutout here, the frame I mean. So what we need to uh, create that is a void form. So void forms work basically the same as the usual uh, forms work except they don't create a, a form but a negative form so you can uh, as shown in this little video cut out something of an existing uh, object so what we do is basically the same as before we create an extrusion but not a solid extrusion but a void extrusion so we need a rectangle that goes on top of the inner edge of the um, frame that we're going to lock to the frame and then a second one oops, that goes on top of that. Okay, And now after hitting escape to exit the command we're going to use the shortcut TR which is short for trim and represents this command right here to uh, close the, the form so you will see in a second oops, what I did so this avoids the dragging of those lines and you guessed it we need another parameter for the uh, thickness of this void form so same as before Okay, and now select one of them and create a new uh, parameter that we're going to name cut out thickness. Oops. Okay. But we're going to change that to 40. Okay, now select the other two dimensions. and then set them to the same parameter. Now we're going to finish that off and then take a look at it on the reference level. So this is the extrusion that we created, which does not cut through the frame yet that we created before. So we need to move it as well. And I want to drag it to the exterior side of the wall and then fix it to the reference plane. And now we, and now when we move the other end, we can see that it creates this kind of form that we wanted for the frame. And we're going to use another dimension to make the, to set the depth to the same value as the cutout thickness. 
Okay, so that's pretty much everything we need to do for the frame. So now let's take a look at it in 3D. So this is the frame that we've just created. So now before we create the actual door, let's check to see if the parameters work fine. So let's change the width to 150 maybe. Okay, so that works fine. And then the frame thickness, if we set that to 100. Okay, so everything changes appropriately. Okay. And now for the actual door, we need another extrusion. So we go back to the reference level and then create an extrusion that goes something like this. And then closes. Okay, so now to make sure that this distance in the wall is always the same as the cutout, we're going to create another dimension and then set it to the same value as the cutout thickness. Oops, let's move that to the side. And also to make sure that those distances are always the same, we're going to create a new parameter. Oops. So we know already how to do this. Click uh, escape and then go to label and create a new parameter. So we'll call that site offset maybe. Okay, so this is the same. Perfect. Okay, so we can finish off this extrusion now and then see about the height. Oops. So this is the extrusion that we just created and then let's fix it to the frame. Close that locket and here we go. This is our door. Okay, so maybe we should make a cut right here so this doesn't get too long. And then I'll show you next week how we can assign the material parameters to the door and how we can make it openable, as I said. So stay tuned for next week when I will show you the part two of this tutorial. Bye bye!